Hello everyone and welcome to Box Office Receipts. I am your host, Tyler Callahan. Got some news and numbers to talk about as always, so let's get started with the top five. Opening in first place is Guy Ritchie's new film, Wrath of Man, which made $8 million. In second place is Demon Slayer with $3 million for a total of $39.6 million. In third place is Mortal Kombat with $2.3 million for a total of $37.8 million. In fourth place is Godzilla vs. Kong with $1.9 million for a total of $92.9 million. Lastly, in fifth place is Raya and the Last Dragon with $1.8 million for a total of $43.8 million. So let's start off with Wrath of Man, which I think did okay, but could have done better. The reviews were good overall, so it had that going for it, and Jason Statham starring in it. Uh, it did open in 2,875 theaters, so while not over 3,000 like Godzilla vs. Kong, it was a pretty wide release. I guess my thinking was because this replaced Black Widow, that would give people who needed to go out, see something, this would have been the movie. And it would have given it a boost. It didn't. I will say, it did open just a little under The Gentleman, which came out last January, so at least uh, Richie Films are being a little consistent at the box office. Demon Slayer dropped 52% compared to last weekend, but if it can hold out a little more, it should pass 45 million, and maybe even hit 50 million at the end of its run. There is also a real chance now it passed Raya and The Last Dragon. Speaking of Raya, I saw that Cinemark and Disney came to some kind of agreement as the theater chain has started to show the movie. This resulted in a boost of 505 more theaters showing the film this weekend, and from a weekend to weekend, a 35% boost. Obviously, we have no idea what they agreed to, maybe better rates, or Cinemark could have just caved in and shown the movie. Not sure. I think it is safe to assume that they will be showing Cruella and Black Widow as well when they open. Moving over to China, it looks like from their Labor Day weekend, Cliff Walkers looks to be the most well-received from the bunch as it shot up to first place this weekend with 24.3 million for a total of 118 million. Breakthrough to Darkness came in second place with 13.8 million for a total of 34.6 million. In third place was last year's winner, which was dropped hard, and that is My Love with 8.9 million with a total of 113 million. Fourth place was Once Upon a Time in Hong Kong with 5.2 million for a total of 31.7 million. Lastly, in fifth place was Home Sweet Home, which made 2 million for a total of 32.1 million. So once again, good word of mouth as well as bad word of mouth strongly affected these movies. My Love was the big winner last weekend, but is now doing under 10 million for a weekend, while Cliff Walker's only had a small decline, and overall has passed My Love. As for what's next for China, well, for non-Chinese films, we got Wrath of Man, already started doing previews, so we'll have numbers for that for the next episode. We also have The Return of the King re-release opening next weekend, and then of course at the end of the month, F9. Worldwide Wrath of Man is now at 25.7 million. Godzilla vs. Kong is at 422.6 million. Nobody is at 44 million, and Mortal Kombat is at 72.5 million. Domestically, we have Spiral, the next Saw movie coming out this weekend. That should easily take first place, but with how much, I'm not sure. I'm gonna guess between 10 to 15 million. For cinemas reopening in Europe, Italy is working on it with some having been run open, but obviously with restrictions. These include masks, 50% capacity, no concession sales, and an odd one of a 30-day window for exclusivity. That last one I read was a change from the government, and it is for Italian movies at least. It is unclear if it is for Hollywood movies as well. Needless to say, Italian theater owners were not happy about the move. Sony continued their move making this week. Not by selling a movie, no, but finally starting promotion for one of their big ones this year with Venom, Let There Be Carnage. They released the first trailer and poster and confirmed in the trailer that it'll only be in theaters. I expect studios to be doing that more often now for a while. Before it was in trailers, it was usually just, you know, small writing, but now it's going to be a big and bold to let you know can only be watched in theaters. As for what I thought of it, uh, it looks uh, fine. I thought the first one was very average, and this one only looks slightly better, so eh. But look, as a box office guy, and as a fan of Hollywood, I love it coming out. People love the first Venom movie, so hopefully they show up in droves to see the sequel. Other trailers released this week, as marketing seems to be picking up now, includes a new trailer for Quiet Place Part 2, A24 Screwing Night, uh, The Forever Purge, and Still Water. It does seem now that the studios are comfortable with their release dates that they're willing to start up the marketing, which is nice to see. Paramount is not done locking up stars and production companies, with the next one being John Krasinski. Deadline has the exclusive on this, 
in that the studio has signed Krasinski's production company Sunday Night to a first look deal, just like Maximum Effort and Ryan Reynolds. This one was important for Paramount because thanks to A Quiet Place being a hit, they now have a horror franchise on their hands. So what is it in the works at Sunday Night? Well, a third movie in the Quiet Place franchise, which was already announced last year, another movie called Department 7A, and then a movie with both Krasinski and Ryan Reynolds. For Krasinski, he'll be directing, writing, and producing the movie, while Reynolds will star in it and produce. Paramount has been quiet on the details for it other than it comes out in November 2023, so a fair bit away. As for John Krasinski, this is what he had to say about the deal. Quote, I'm thrilled to be continuing my relationship with Paramount, who have been the most supportive partners throughout the creation of our Quiet Place world and in the development of these new original stories that we can't wait to tell. End quote. I think this is a great boom by Paramount, and I would have assumed if they could have done it earlier, they would have. Maybe there are other studios competing for them. Not sure. But overall, I'm liking this move from Paramount. If they can allow these production companies to make the movies they want to do and are hit, then it works on two levels. First, they get good movies for the studio, which can only help them. But it also elevates their status in Hollywood as a place for creative freedom, which could convince stars, producers, and directors to take their talents there. Clearly, Paramount is playing the long game here. Now we wait and see if it pays off for them. VOD Premium is a bit quiet this week compared to last week, but there's still some news. For now, uh, Netflix's Knives Out 2, we are getting some of the casting announcements, and so far they are pretty big. This week it was announced that Dave Bautista and Edward Norton would join the movie starring Daniel Craig. So far no details on the plot yet, just that production is still set to start this summer in Greece, so we'll be getting more announcements soon. As for who was announced so far, I think it's great. I like both actors, so right now I'm really looking forward to this movie. Also, I did not have time to add this to last week's episode, but NBC Universal did have their quarterly results, and with it, an update for Peacock. They now have 42 million signups, up from 33 million from January. So it's good for them, and it's a lot of signups. But this has always been the question how many of them are paid, which we still don't know. They did note that they are working on opportunities. For them to bring Peacock internationally, or at least to the UK, by working with Sky, though no concrete details were announced. I think it would be good for them to go international to get more signups, but I also think they need to start beefing up their service with the catalogue of Universal movies, assuming they are not caught up in distribution rates. This is if they're really serious about the service being not just like, oh, we have 50, 60 million signups, but you know, you have 20, 30 million of them being paid, paying 7 bucks, 10 bucks a month. That's... That's generating some revenue right there, Need And that'll be it for this episode of Box Office Receipts. Question for the episode is, how are you liking the cast for Knives Out 2 so far? Let me know on Facebook. Link to the pages in the show notes. Thank you for listening, and see you next time.